Hello, 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 and welcome to Her Talk Show. My name is Sabrina Victoria, and I am here with Debbie Golden. We are here to talk about entrepreneurship, my favorite subject ever. <laughs> Super excited about this. I want you to get comfortable as we explore the triumphs, the challenges faced by women worldwide, offering insights and inspiration to fuel your personal and professional growth. Let's jump right in. Get ready because today's guest is about to change the way you view your world. This is Her Talk Show, hosted by Sabrina Victoria. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. If you are listening live, welcome. And if you're listening on the replay, make sure you hashtag replay in the comments wherever you're watching this out so we can drop you some love in the comments. We are here every day delving deep into the realms of health, wealth, and leadership with some of the most brilliant women globally. We have interviewed over 600 women, and today we are adding another one to the list. We have Debbie Golden, who started working at a age 12 in her father's side business. He instilled the entrepreneurial spirit inside of her and through life's crazy roller coaster, she has worked in corporate America and also ran her own businesses, which I freaking love. She still has the, the fire inside of her. It's just evolving throughout the years and she is here to serve others. Yes. Love, love, love that. I love it, girl. I want to dive into this corporate and business, um, side business or, or side hustle, or however you want to say it. And the reason I want to talk about this is because I talk to so many women who drop the nine to five, and I don't know where you are. You, you can explain where you're at, but who drop the nine to five completely. They're like, I'm going to follow my passion. Fuck corporate America. This is a toxic environment. And they drop it. And they dive into entrepreneur. They're like, I'm going to follow my heart's passion. And I've been led to serve. And they open up a website. They take some courses. They get certified in some stuff. And they're super excited. And then they're waiting for their $10,000 months. <laughs> and their $10,000 months don't come. And then there's this weirdness of failure thinking like, yeah. they usually they like use all their savings to like the very end. And then they're just like, I suck an entrepreneur as an entrepreneur. And they yeah. just went right back into corporate and they drop the whole dream. And I just felt bad because I'm like, girl, you have to do both sometimes. You have to like massage it until it makes sense and go in and out and up and down. And it's a journey that's part of it. It isn't like win or fail. Totally so I would love to hear yeah. what are you doing? What is that looking like for you? All transparency. Yeah. In order to allow the women to realize like, hey, listen, this looks different for everybody. It does. And you know, every you said so many things in that opening statement, because a lot of what you said really, really um, is what I'm doing today. So I did just leave corporate America. December 29th was my last day in corporate. So I, it feels like this 10,000 pound gorilla has been taken off my back. And it is just, it has made my life um, just so much better because I'm not constantly traveling, constantly on virtual calls. You know, you wake up to people that have just put these meetings on your calendar in corporate America. And it's just the lifestyle. And it just sort of robs you of your time with your family, your friends, or anything that you want to do. So yes, I was able to get out of that lifestyle. Um, but what I'm doing now is exactly, exactly what you said. So I do digital marketing and it is to try and help women transform their life by monetizing their passion. Mm -hmm. And there are courses and there are things to do, but you are exactly right. Because what happens is people think that they should just take this course and then magically they're going to make $10,000 a month and it's going to be so easy. And they see people on social media making it look so easy that they just make $10,000 a month and it's going to, but it's not like that, right? It's not like that. And then it's bad because, you know, I want to help and serve others. Cause I've worked in corporate America and my other businesses where I helped zero people. So mm -hmm. now I'm in a place where I do want to actually help and serve other women. And 
if I can help other women kind of escape that same um, stress and anxiety of that nine to five lifestyle where you're sort of doing that tug of war between your career and family, career and family um, through digital marketing, that's that's my ultimate goal because um, I just don't think life is supposed to be like that, how it was for me, like at least till now anyway, like you just are never balanced or you never feel you know, you're not fully satisfied in your soul. You're not fully satisfied because you're not spending enough time with your family. You're not spending enough time with your friends. You're not doing enough for your career. You never feel enough. So long story short, um, I'm starting a full coaching program, which is I'm developing, working my ass off for, but um, you can't really do anything without accountability, mindset, and coaching. Mm. So many of these online courses are good, but when people are left to their own devices, like even Tony Robbins in like Alex Hermosi just gave away $10,000 of free, like three years of his work and gave it away to all of these people, millions of people, 1% of all of that people took and went through the course and the courses were given for free. So people just don't, number one, take the course and number two, implement the course. So that's why people need accountability, mindset and coaching. It's did, just- he, did Alex Ramosi announce it somewhere? Like he actually said the numbers like, hey, listen, I gave this course and one person took the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So if, do you remember he actually like he like broke down the Internet because he had so many people. He was standing yeah. in that room and he had all those TV cameras on it it was on like youtube and like literally i don't, can't remember how many people 480,000 or 880,000 i don't know there was so many people on this call and he gave he took 3 years of his life and has all these like cold leads how to do you know lead generation all of these different tools and courses gave them all away for free and 1% of people even opened them up yeah. Isn't that insane? Isn't that crazy? It's insane. So yeah. what is that? Is that fear? Is that laziness? Is that procrastination? What is that? All of it. Right. I mean, we, so like I was just this morning, I just made this video about, um, and posted on social media that like, I've been working in the same industry for over 20 years. And so when you have to actually take the mentality and kind of humble yourself to become a student again and to learn a new skill and kind of step out of your comfort zone. People don't like doing that. You know what I mean? That's hard. Number one, I'll be honest, like what I'm doing right now, it's a little bit of ego because I was really successful in my corporate America slash industry. And the new thing that I'm doing is extremely humbling. You know, because it's like you're learning something new, like you don't really know what you're doing like you you think you do, but it's just hard to learn new things. Like, can you teach an old dog new tricks? I don't know. I'll let you know in a couple of months. (laughs) Definitely, definitely. And I do totally get that. I think sometimes there's like a, a block where you start to learn something different and then your brain literally starts to hurt. And then it's just like, I can't. And then the difference is some people just take a break for like an hour, a day, a week, and then go back. And then other people, the majority of people just never go back. Yeah. I think we, as women, our self-talk is so important we can be our obviously biggest advocates or our worst enemies. And I think our self-talk needs to change. We can do everything. We, we can, you know, we just have that, you know, what is it called? Imposter syndrome. We have self-doubt. We, we can't do this. We compare ourselves to others. You know, we don't want to fail. We don't want to do all these things. And we keep resonating these negative thoughts in our head. And I think it was, oh, who said this, but um, 
whether you believe it or you don't, it's true, right? right? Because like, if you think you're going to succeed, it's true. If you think you're going to fail, you're right too. So it's just the continued self-talk that we need to change and snap out of that habit of saying that you can't, or you're not good enough, or you're too old, too fat, too ugly, to this, to that, to all these two things, you know, you just, we have to just get better at believing in ourselves and um, be authentic yeah. of who we are. Cause I, I do believe God made only one of us and no one else is like any one of us and social media and the world right now needs so much more authenticity. Yeah. And it's just craving for it. You know, everyone is so sick of seeing perfect because yeah. nobody's perfect. Like, I just think right now everyone is just craving more real. Yeah, definitely. And I do feel like there are two sides to social media. There is the curated side. And then there is the side that you're talking about of people that are really stepping into the realism. And I think it's important to make sure that you're on the right side in order to feel comfortable stepping into your authenticity. Because if all you're doing is just totally immersing yourselves, the algorithm can screw you over. Because if all you're doing is stopping and looking at just these beautiful curated houses or design or clothes or figures, you know, body figures or hair, the algorithm feeds you more of what you're already looking at, unfortunately. Right. So then you just start going through and you're like, everybody's perfect. Mm-hmm. It's like, girl, there's a whole other side of us that are just like showing up with our hair a mess, you yep. know, rolling out of bed. <laughs> well, literally the majority of my posts are before I'm still in my pajamas. I haven't brushed my teeth yet. And like, it's just literally my hair, like, and honestly, that's when I get some of the most um, traction is when I'm literally myself and not perfect. Yeah. Totally. So making sure you're um, also surrounding yourself with that sort of mentality so that it's easier for you. Because I look at social media now and I'm like, man, there's all sizes now. There's all beauty now. If you, if you're on that side Mm -hmm. and even just even sexuality now, like trans and bi and, and gay, lesbian, like there's a whole section of people that are just showing up authentic, cross-dressing, um, which could or should allow us to be able to step into who we are. Yeah. There's people that are paving the way. Well, and it's honestly, you know, to your point, how it works is just if you're, no matter what platform you're on, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, if you just start searching for certain topics, oh, good all the other, that's what your feed is going to start to show you because that's what that platform thinks that you want to see. So there's good to that and there's bad to that, right? So you just have to like, um, kind of know that because what happened, the the bad side is like, if you, I'm just, I'm making it up. Let's say you just start looking for a car. And so you see all this car stuff come up, car, car, car. And all of a sudden, like, you see people with the car and then you start comparing yourself and like looking at things because that's all, that's all you're seeing Yeah. when it's really such a fraction of yeah. what really is out there in social media. But because you started searching for it, the algorithm is just pushing all that content and that's all you're seeing. So it becomes yeah. a really small like box that they put you in. And so you can change up your feeds, right. By searching for something different or whatever. But, um, you just have to be careful because sometimes you can get boxed into something that's not really real. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would love to talk a little bit about um, the entrepreneurial spirit. And I really ha- like how you're framing this as far as, you know, started when you were 12, went into corporate, but you've always kind of had that spirit inside of you, stepping into it now. Um, what do you mean when you say the entrepreneurial spirit is in all of us? What does that mean to you? Well, I think, um, 
you know, we all were born, again, unique and different, every single one of us. And so we were born, I believe, with a calling, whatever calling or passion it is. And it is so different and okay, whatever that passion and calling is. And I think we, and I'm an example of it in my younger years where you, I did what I was supposed to do. You know, you go to high school. I went off to college. I, you know, got married, had the kids. I did all of the things that I thought I was supposed to do, you know, got the good job, climbed the corporate ladder, did all check the boxes. And I think because I did that, there were parts of my entrepreneurial spirit that kind of went dormant because you got stuck into that corporate lie of, you know, the salary, the paycheck, save for retirement, you know, you're, you get put in a box and you're told that this box is good. And it's really kind of not, I mean, because you are capped, you are capped and controlled by your job, right? They tell you how much vacation you can have, how much you can make. You know, you're supposed to be happy with your three to 5% yearly raise. And um, so I guess for me, um, seeing my dad do, um, he always had his, he worked for um, uh, Milwaukee County. He was a social worker. So he had his stable job, but in the background, he ran so many different businesses. So I think I kind of followed in those footsteps where I felt like I had the security on one side, which let me be more risk totally. on the, um, on kind of the entrepreneur side. So, um, I did take a, you know, a leap out of corporate America when I was younger, like 30 something. And I started my own firm and, um, just through like situations, I also went back into corporate America, did both for a while. Um, but I guess the biggest takeaway is that, you know, I was trying to do what I thought I was supposed to do my whole life. Um, and that really probably wasn't, that didn't fulfill my soul because I helped, I was great. Like I did amazing. Like I was sold so much stuff and I did all the right things, but I, I, I didn't help anybody. <laughs> I didn't help one. I mean, I raised my kids, but I mean, literally serving and fulfilling my passion. No, nothing in all those years, you know, mm. the plaques, the banners, the awards, they really don't mean anything to me. Right. Cause I didn't help anybody. Definitely. So when you say that the entrepreneur spirit is inside of all of us, um, is that really all of us? Yeah. How do we know? How do we find it? Well, because you, what do you find yourself doing? Like when you're like this, probably being on the podcast is probably very passionate for you. You seem like you love this. And so I can tell that you are walking in your passion, right? Mm -hmm. And you probably stumbled along as like you said, your youngest is 20. And, um, you know, you were able to walk into that passion more probably as your kids got older and you had more time to do that. It's almost like it's just that thing that you find yourself thinking about when you don't know you're thinking about it. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like that, um, it's that book that I'm, you know, that I just wrote my chapter is called The Unquenchable Entrepreneur Spirit, because it's just something inside of you that you can't explain. You can't stop it. It's just there. And I just love business. Why? I don't know. I just love it. And now, to be able to step into a season of my life where I can help other women and potentially, number one, transform their life, monetize their passion, and get them, you know, possibly out of a nine to five lifestyle where it's just chaos, you know, crisis to crisis. You know, we're all, you know, moms, right? Where where you're working full time and you're on a conference call and you're going to the soccer game, you realize one shoe's still at home and the jersey's in the dryer and you're just like on a call and you're trying to tell the person, hold on, hold on, I've got a kid in the car. And like, you know, you're just like, it's a constant, constant like shit show, right? It's just like always a shit show. And, and so we're like me, unfortunately, I do feel like my kids a lot 
a lot of years and I have regret about it. I put them to the side or was like, be quiet, be quiet. You know, instead they're like my, they're my soul. And I wish I would have not been so focused on my career and had more time with them. Mm -hmm. Now I am, you know, more available to them now because of leaving corporate America, but you know, the people that you love are supposed to be the most important. And there are so many times because of their nine to fives that they get pushed aside Mm. because it's that tug of war between your job and your career. And it's just, I don't think it was meant to be like that. Yeah. I agree with that for sure. Um, I love how you're saying that you love business. I think that there's a lot of women that can relate to that, where they just really appreciate working and creating and building. But there also comes a point when it gets really hard. Um, And there's seasons of that, right? There's really hard. There's kind of hard. There's frustrating. There's just hurts my head to think. Um, How have you been able or how are you able to stay consistent um, despite the challenges and the struggles? Uh, you know, we, we all have our story, right? Personal, business-wise, whatever. And I think for me, for some reason, no matter what life threw at me, I would, even though I was crying or on my knees crawling, I didn't stop. Mm. I don't know what that is. I don't know what gift I was given that I was able to do that, like see through so many of life's challenges, obstacles um, that like, I just never stopped. Um, And in the business that I'm doing now, especially being on social media so much, you have to be consistent even when you don't want to, because that's just not only for your audience that you're building, but also for the algorithm. You know, it's like, I feel like I left corporate to work for the Instagram algorithm. (laughs) Totally. That's exactly, you know, so it's like, um, you know, it's staying consistent also comes to, again, you really digging deep inside of you. And what is your why? Like, what is your biggest why for me to find, like, I've had so many amazing conversations with women who are just like me, who have worked nine to five, felt the tug of war, unsatisfied. They feel, you know, they're drugged by their employers for their salary and benefits. And life is just passing them by because they're traveling on conference calls. It's it's sad, but talking with women has been so soul fulfilling for me because I've been able to help them along this journey, um, which again goes into that coaching mindset accountability that we all need. Like we as women, I think we need strong women around us. I've always needed like my friends, but I also really, really, really needed um, business women around me because, you know, I have lots of friends, but some might not have the same career drive I do. So I've been able to find women that have the same, shall we say, drive that I do. And so um, it's just been so to be able to serve other women and to see them make life transformations because of our conversations and the successes that they've had, it that like it trumps everything I've ever done in corporate America. Bye. Yeah. I love that you're talking about community. Community is something that I talk about pretty much all day, every day, <laughs> the importance of it. And I think sometimes there is this uncertainty about community. First of all, how to build it. And also just kind of scared, like scared to build it maybe. What has your journey looked like? How do you go out and intentionally pull people towards you, um, create friendships, create community of like-minded women, right? A lot of us have friends that are just like there, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they're not always, 
the friends we should be associating with on a daily basis. Sometimes yeah, there is I mean, some toxicity. So there is some like <laughs> flushing out that we have to do sometimes. Um, but how had you grown a solid community around yourself? Oh my goodness. I mean, there's probably so many of them on this call because I asked them to watch. So I am, I have just been blessed. I have so many different groups of women that are friends. And I feel like all of them in a way serve a different piece of me. Like, you know what I mean? Like if I just wanted, I don't know how to say it, but my friendships, honestly, have all been over 20 or 30 years. Like I've had the same women around me for a million years, but professionally and especially right now, um, I'm building a new community of women through social media. And this circles kind of back to what we were talking about of the authenticity. And I'm finding that by just being my true authentic self and just posting videos about, um, you know, the nine to five struggling mom, are you sick? You know, are you sick of feeling exhausted? Not enough. You know, all of those things, people are just attracted to it because they're resonating with me. They're resonating with my message. They're resonating with how real I am about, you know, how my life was. They, they're they resonating with my leaving corporate America um, and, you know, how that's, you know, panning out. So it goes back to you. If you are vulnerable and you are just your true authentic self, other people will resonate with you because they are feeling the same exact thing. And, and that's what I want is because that's who I'm trying to serve and help. Like, so I, by being authentically me, um, in all of its imperfections and whatever people, my tribe will find me because that's who I am. Yeah. I think also individuals don't always realize how important they are to the world. Um, like, how do you know that the world needs you? Like, how do you, Debbie Golden, know that? I think people are missing that. How do you know? Oh, that almost makes me cry a little bit. I don't know. Um, because it's been put on my soul. Um, why, why am I getting all emotional? I know I'm getting emotional right now, but I am, but I just feel like uh, I know it because I can feel it. Hmm. Oh my God. Why am I crying? <laughs> this is so weird. I don't know. I can feel it. You just know, like, right. Like I just feel like God put it on my heart that I'm just going to cry. Cause I don't care. Um, like I can, I have been so blessed in my life with, I have the most amazing kids. I have the most amazing parents. And oh my God, why am I crying? Am I having my period or something? No, I went through menopause, but, <laughs> um, but it's just, you know, I've been so blessed and I guess it's time for me to give back. I feel it like I'm coming into a season of my life where I've been blessed so greatly. And now it's my turn to give back to other people. Hmm. so it's hmm. my turn it's my turn so I can um people will you know like I said people will find me because I truly want to help them I do I truly if I can help women get out of that just crazy lifestyle like I don't want women to like live the life I did I mean it was amazing I was so blessed I learned so much but oh my gosh it was hard like I don't want to travel all the time and it's just, it's so much, it takes away from the people that you really love. Like I never see my friends. Well, now I'm building this business, so I'm not seeing them again, but either way, like, it's just, um, I just feel like it's my time to give back instead of taking, like I can give back. And I do think there's value in what I've learned through all of my years in life and just women, friends, family. Um, and I think they'll find me. Hmm. I love Why that. Why am I crying, Sabrina? Do people cry in your show? All the time. <laughs> what the hell? All the time. 
And so, and so do I. Oh. I, love, I love crying though. I, um, not that you don't, but I, I don't know. I think it's real. I appreciate it. I've cried so hard on this podcast where I can't <laughs> even talk. <laughs> it's like, so like the guest, and it's their story. I'm like crying. Oh. And they have to like take over because I'm just like, oh my God. Man. Yeah, I just can't even speak. Um, this has been great. I so appreciate this. I think this is a subject that women need to hear to kind of just realize that everyone's journey is different. And it doesn't matter where your journey was or where it is now. Um, and I think a lot of it is also intention, right? So like, if you don't want to be where you're at, are you creating a game plan for yourself? Like, did you create a game plan or did you just like one day you're like F this and you just left? Yeah. I, well, my aha moment was honestly when we started thinking about colleges for my middle one. So he's um, 18 now. He's leaving in the fall. And I'm like, do I want these next like three years that I have left with my boys at home to look like all the ones before? Mm. And that was an easy no for me. I'm like, no, like they are, we are so close and I love them like so deeply. And I don't want to be traveling all the time. I don't want that for me and I don't want that for them. And so I'd rather spend the rest of my time at home and available for them to just enjoy them. Like they're fun. They are so fun. They're 16 and 18 and they're just hysterical. And I just love being here for them and cooking for them and hanging out. I'd rather be with them on a Tuesday night, you know, whatever cooking and they're just being goofy than anything else in the world. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, this has been great. I so appreciate it. I took a ton of notes to myself and I know that those watching live and on the replay here definitely felt all of that. Um, to those listening, can you give us a idea? I know you've already kind of here and there explained it, but can you give us a idea of exactly what you do and exactly who you help, who should be reaching out to you? So um, anyone, I keep saying the same sentence because um, this might resonate, but if you are looking to transform your life and monetizing your passion, that's who should reach out. And I have a couple of friends. I don't know if she's on the call or not. One in specific that I'm going to hit up because I want her to do this. Um, but if anyone is looking to truly create some passive income to either supplement their current nine to five or they want to change their lifestyle. It's all about walking and living in your passion and then monetizing it. So if you love, honestly, anything from pickleball, cooking, um, whatever your true passion is, we can create digital products that you can monetize from and it will change your life. Love it. Very cool. Where can people find you? Social media? Where do you hang out? Yeah, the best place that I'm on all the time is Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram at Debbie.digital. Um, I post these really goofy five to seven second videos and they work. Um, and I am, like I said, in my pajamas, not teeth, not brushed. And, um, and it works and that's where people find me. So it's Debbie.digital. Debbie.digital. Yep. Digital. Oh my gosh. Do I know how to spell digital? How embarrassing. Let's <laughs> okay. see if I know how to spell it. You will tell me. Okay. Is that right? Yep. Yes, girl. I love it. For those of you watching live or on the replay, Debbie's um, website is in a clickable link in the description below or wherever you are watching us at. Sabrina, sure. I'm mad at you for making me cry. Ah. You'll love that later. 
So, All right. Closing thoughts. What do you got? I guess just, you know, life is so short. My mom and I were talking that thing. It's, I feel like I'm just in it going into a different season of my life. You know, I had before kids with kids and as they're getting older, I'm just kind of stepping into a new season. And I feel like this is my season to, you know, resonate and connect with women who want to do something different that their lives that they can actually be proud of. Hmm. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Yes. It was so great. Thank you so much. Of course. This brings us to an end of yet another incredible episode of Her Talk Show. Thank you, Debbie, for joining us and sharing your wisdom, your stories, your inspiration. To our dedicated listeners who are still here with us, thank you for staying with us until the very end. Please remember to follow like, and share. Once again, I am your host, Sabrina Victoria, and I invite you to join our amazing community, Her Nation, where we continue to uplift each other by having conversations just like this one to help you out every step of the way. Until next time. <laughs>